In this video, I want to show you how to prepare a 3D object uh, for digital production in Shaper Tools. What we do is we start with uh, our design and you can see that this design has no material thickness. In Biber, we add material thickness and also the joints for digital production. And uh, what you can also see that afterwards we nesting everything uh, in uh, Biber and produce in Rhino with make 2D curve, uh, curve objects for digital production in Shaper Tools. In this video, I want to show you how to prepare a 3D model in Biber for digital production with the Shaper Tool. What you can see is uh, that my basic object has no material dimensions and no joints. So what you can do in Biber, you can add the material thickness, you can uh, add the joints, in this case finger joints, you can nest everything for digital production, and you can also then in Rhino with Make2D create curves, which you can load as an SVG file into your Shaper tool directly. Okay, let's start. First of all, we look at the 3D model in Rhino, and uh, these are just uh, single surfaces and they are joined. If I enter your, uh, your command deal, I can just see in which direction they actually show. And uh, some surfaces I probably would like to uh, swap, for example, these top ones. And my recommendation is um, you explode everything. This is much better. Uh, you just explode all the surfaces and you can then, um, again, just uh, take them all and just say deal. And you can change the directions. So everything uh, looks um, to the outside where it has to look to the outside. And once you did this, you can then afterwards load it into your plugin Biber. First of all, I have to get it into Grasshopper. Uh, Grasshopper is open. I just open my Biber plugin. I select the whole model and I double click on the canvas and I just enter DWeb because it's fully surfaced. And uh, once uh, I, I have selected B-Web, I just go on right mouse stick, set multiple B-Webs because I have single surfaces and they are not joined. And uh, now uh, my 3D model is already in Grasshopper. The next thing is we start with assembling and uh, I have to transform my B-Web to a planar poly surface, which is an internal uh, element of Biber. I just connect it uh, as Planar B-Webs like this. And the next step, I have to assemble this. Uh, I just go into assemble and I connect the Planar poly surface. And um, this already looks good if you want to. In my, um, in my viewport, I can just hide my real object and then you can see probably a little bit better what, uh, what you're doing in Grasshopper. Um, the next thing afterwards is we want to uh, add a dimension. Uh, I just add a negative shell to my shell type and I define a thickness. We are in millimeters. I define a thickness of um, 12 millimeters, somewhere like this, and I just connect it to my thickness. We have a huge library of different kind of joints and fiber. Uh, what we would like to use, we would like to use the finger joints. So I just add finger joints to my joint type and my assembly. And you can still see that there's a warning and uh, I have to define the spacing or the count. I just go into count and uh, just add a count of, um, of three, for example. I just connect my three to my count and then I think we will not have any error anymore. And so far, you can't see anything in the viewport because you have to disassemble this. So I go into disassemble. I just connect my component disassemble uh, to my assemble. And so far, you still don't see anything because what you have to do is you have to um, unfold it and get it into um, uh, get it ready for digital production. So. Uh, you can use the unfold component and connect it to your disassemble like this. And here we go. This already looks much different. So far, it's an overlap of different kind of uh, components and uh, grasshopper. So I just select my, um, my B-Web and I just say right mouse click of preview off. 
I also go into my planner polysurfaces and you see I already switched it off before. This is also something I want to switch off so I can only see uh, my unfold and this I can already bake in Rhino to have a better look at my, my design. I just go into solid, I just say a white mouse click and bake and I already prepared a layer, baked 01 and I will just bake it on this layer. Okay, Rhino, I will close for a moment. And here we go, we can see our design and this already looks quite uh, quite good. And to see it even better, I just switch off my ISO curves and uh, very few issues I can see. First of all, these two are not connected and it would be really nice if they will be connected. Secondly, there's a little bit of a mistake here. It looks like a mistake and I would like to fix it. And if I think about digital production, my finger joints should be a little bit extruded so I can send it off afterwards. Okay, we will fix this. I will delete my model because I don't need this anymore. And I open Grasshopper again. Here we go. And um, I will have a look at, first of all, at my joint type. So this issue with these um, two separated elements I can fix really quickly. There's something like joint co-planner sheets. If I click on this, then this problem is already solved. The next thing in terms of the extension is uh, something I can add. I can just add, for example, like uh, one millimeter, for example, somewhere like this. And uh, now I have an extension of um, one millimeter. You can see this is my extension. This is also good. Um, if you want to see what kind of difference it's make, I can, for example, instead of three, I can have, uh, I like the three, by the way, I can have five uh, numbers uh, in my finger join and it will just change it in real time. I just go back and double click and I want to have uh, uh, a three. So uh, my slider of my count, obviously, I would like to have a three here. I think this looks really good. So the only thing we still have to fix is our little issue here at the top. In my component uh, joint, uh, you have the option of uh, choosing different kind of configuration. If there are two edges, uh, you can just see which, uh, which surface overlaps the other. Uh, if you look at this, uh, I can uh, just change it and I just switch to one and you can see that something is uh, moving and um, they probably don't need all the same configuration. So what I have to add, I just have to add a different kind of uh, configuration only for this edge. And the way uh, we do it, I just copy all these um, uh, components of my joint. I have it now a second time. I just go into merge. Uh, somewhere like this. I connect my joint types with uh, my merge and now I can connect the joint, uh, the merge with my assembly joint and now I have the option to be able to connect um, um, joints and have a different setting for each joint and each edge if I want this. There's one thing I remember, the thickness of the sheets I have in my workshop is wrong. It was not 12 millimeter, it's 10, but that's not a big deal. I just changed it to 10 and now I changed everything to 10 millimeters and I uh, have my thickness like the sheets in the workshop. Okay, what I have to figure out, I have to figure out um, the name of this edge. This is quite easy. I just go into my um, PPS tools and there is something like edge labeling. Edge labeling is really handy. I just connect it to my planar pulley surface and you see really small numbers there too small. So I just enter uh, 10 millimeters and connect it to the size. And so it's much easier, easier to read. And you can see that there's an edge number three. I would like to optimize it. And uh, if I just add um, the slider three and I just connect it to my edge, then um, it's, uh, I have the chance to change the setup of this edge and I just go and uh, change the config and this OD looks really good. Alternatively, you can probably even better use a panel 
This makes uh, sense because of the slider you only have one option. I enter three. I just change it to multi-data and you can add many edges, whatever you want, and uh, just connect this. Uh, that's probably better than using a slider. Okay, when I look at all my components, you can see that there's a little bit of an issue, and this is here. Uh, there's shell number 20, which is an open shell. And if we just bake this, and I just go into bake and uh, bake 01, and I just uh, close my grasshopper to see a little bit better, then you can see that there is an issue with one surface, and I didn't have it before, and this is something we have to fix. And I already have an idea uh, of how to fix it. I just go back to uh, I just go back to Grasshopper. We didn't have this before, and what we did is we just uh, joined this coplanar faces. And when you see the complexity of this um, surface, uh, you can imagine that, especially here, this doesn't look good. And maybe we just have to change this coplanar um, surface joining at this point at number twenty, and uh, we are fine again. Okay, I copy these components and move them down and uh, connect this again to my uh, joint, uh, to my merge. And uh, here we just enter number uh, 20, somehow like this. I go back to the configuration of uh, zero because this was what we had before. I disconnect joint coplanar sheets. Nothing happened because I made a mistake, because uh, this is our surface 20, but what we actually want to change is the edge here. So instead of 20, I just enter my edge number 14, somewhere like this, and here we go. The surface is there and everything looks good, and I also don't have any error anymore in my unfold component. Okay, we are nearly ready for digital production. I look at my part unfold component and I open nesting and I want to have the nesting. I switch the nesting on. Uh, in the sheets, I can uh, enter the dimension of the sheets. Uh, the sheets are so far um, um, with a width and height one meter by one meter. This is fine. You can also double click and just say uh, there's a one meter um, 1 meter 20. At the end of the day, this is not really important to me because uh, just enter um, somewhere, somewhere, like, uh, somewhere like this. So now it's uh, 1 meter 20. That's not important for, uh, for me because I work with the shape of tool differently. You also have the option uh, for a waste calculation, uh, how much waste to use in terms of uh, uh, the nesting, also this is not really important to me. What could be good is uh, switching on the labeling uh, because you probably want to have uh, also the labeling in your um, uh, for digital production. So the only thing I still have to do is to bake everything which I potentially need for my digital production. I just bake the solid. And uh, in my bake, I also have different kind of layers which you don't have to do, but makes probably sense. I bake the solid uh, to be able to look at my 3D object uh, properly. I just select solid and uh, I uh, bake the sheets. And um, here, these are the sheets. Um, again, somewhere like this. Uh, the most important thing is uh, the nested parts. So I just uh, bake uh, the nested parts. And um, the labels, you don't have to do everything on a different layer. This is really up to you. And um, that's all I need. And with this, I can just close Grasshopper. And we have a look at all our elements. I select everything to switch off my uh, isocurves, then I can see it even a little bit better. Um, I would like to have a look at my object again. I just go into my baked and my solid. And um, I already figured out one mistake. These are, these are my solids and these are my uh, label parts. So what I do is just select all my objects on solid and label part, and I just uh, select these objects uh, from both layers. I move it to the right, 
I have a look again, again at my object and um, I checked this, this looks really good. Also this part looks uh, really good. So I think my design is ready for production. Uh, I forgot one thing, I forgot the labels for my object uh, in the unfold. So I have to go and just say nested parts, bake this. And uh, for this, I also had a, la a layer which was called uh, nested label parts. And here we go. So they are also, this is also fixed. And the last thing I want, I would like to prepare for the shaper tool. And the shaper tool needs 2D curves. These are not 2D curves, these are 3D objects. And I just select everything and use the command make 2D. And with this, uh, all the settings are absolutely fine. I just click on OK. And I have my uh, make 2D. Uh, I made my mistake, by, by the way, and probably this can also happen to you because you have to do it in the wide viewport. You can just see that this is distorted uh, through the perspective. Interesting, but this is not what I want. So I just select again my, uh, my nesting and I just say make 2D in my viewport top view. And um, this already looks much better. And the last thing we still have to do is export it as an SVG for my shape tool. You can export the whole sheet or one object after the other. It really depends on how you want to deal with this. I will show you both. And uh, if I just select um, uh, one, um, one object, you can see that there's still single surfaces. This is something which is not good for Shaper 2 because you need a closed, uh, you need a closed curve. So what I do, I just select everything and I just go into join and I hope that most of the curves are then fixed properly. This looks really good. Uh, this is now a closed curve and um, my most favorite tool in Wano is box edit. So if I go in box edit, you can see the dimension of this. And if you just want to uh, save this part, you just select it and you just go into export selected. Um, I already selected SVG and I just uh, name it chair 01 or ideally the number of my, um, um, of my object, it's uh, number three. I just go into save and here you have to do several things. Otherwise you're not successful in custom. You have to enter the dimension. I would just go a little bit uh, bigger. It is in centimeter in this case, 60 by 40 centimeters. Okay, here we go. And then um, view and output scale, um, you should just definitely change not scale to fit, but scale one to one. And I would recommend to use the window and then you can just move this on top and um, here we go and uh, you can just save it like this really good what you can also do is you can just select everything um, difficult to handle with the shape tool uh, but for other digital productions probably good for laser cutter for example you just go and you just see the dimensions it's um, a one meter 23 and um, i just go into export selected and i just uh, call this chair um, sheet one, for example, and uh, then you just enter the dimension, the dimension of uh, one meter 25, for example, in centimeters in this case, because I chose 20, uh, 20 centimeters and uh, one meter 10. It has to be bigger or the same size and you just uh, scale one, you just go into window again, choose, move, move it on top of the sheet, uh, and um, press enter and with this you saved it as the whole sheet and thanks for watching.